Uh, I, I, that won't take long. I, I want our brother to have uh, as much time as he can get uh, to present his, his message and talk about his ministry. But I, I mentioned that I, I had something that I just, I just had to share. Does the Lord ever do stuff like that for you? I mean, it's just so good that you got to tell somebody you can't be quiet. I tell you, you know, most of you know that I was over in Israel. Wow. At the end of it, you know, my, my wife was there and two of my sons were there with me and we we're all talking about what was it? What was the one thing that really, you know, was, was special? And we all had different things. But I got to tell you what mine was. Man, I was standing in line. They had a big, long line, people wanting to see that tomb. They wanted to see that tomb, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, man, I want to see that. I want, I want to see with my own eyes. There's no body there. And boy, I got in there, and I tell you, I, I got, well, it's empty. And I came out, and I yelled to everybody. I says, it's empty. I seen it. And they all got excited. We had, well, I tell you, I had the whole, the whole garden there. They were all shouting. See on that empty tomb. That's what it's all about. If Jesus hadn't rose from the dead, this would all be in vain. It would all be, but it's empty. He rose just as he said he did. Oh, I got excited about that. But that's not what I wanted to share with you. (laughs) Uh, What I wanted to share with you is, you know, how many are praying for things? All the hands up, you know. Have you ever prayed for something and then nothing happens? So you pray again and nothing happens and you pray again and nothing happens and you pray again and nothing happens? No, I'm going to speak on this uh, in the next couple of weeks, probably maybe after Christmas or something. But I want to encourage you, don't give up. God is up to something. He's heard your prayers. And he's doing something. Now, you might not see it. It might be in the spiritual realm. It might be in the the physical realm and someplace down the road that you can't see it. But he hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. He said, whatsoever you ask in my name, believing you will receive. Now, I want to give you a really quick example because this, this just blew me away. I have a son-in-law that I have never met. He's a great guy. My mother loves him. My daughter is in love with him, and he treats her like a queen. But he's not a Christian. He hasn't accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior yet. So we are praying for him. Now, he's, he's an agnostic. You know, agnostic, they, they just don't know. They, 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 they want more evidence. They, 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 they're just, you know, but he, he's a great guy. So we're praying for him, and we're praying for him. Lord, how are you going to get to him? How are you going to get to him? So I, I leave, I, they live out in Washington State, 3,000 miles away. Okay, that's, I've never met him. Uh, I just hear about them from my brother and my sister and, my, of course, my daughter and my mother. Like I, like I said, my mother loves him. He's a great guy. So I fly from here to Israel. We spend 10 days in Israel. And each day I tried to get around Donna and I tried to meet some new people in this group that we were in. There were 470-some and, and, uh, people on this tour that we went to. And... Uh, yeah, we'd eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner with different people. And and so this one day I uh, had lunch with this one man. Talked to him, really a great Christian. Enjoying, you know, we were talking about everything we see. Then we go into Jordan. Okay. We, we went over into Jordan. And in the morning, went down to breakfast. And here was this, this couple down there again. And so Donna and I sat down and began to talk to him. And found out that they were from Washington State. Not only are they from Washington State, but they're from the same city my daughter lives in. You know, and I'm like, oh, my daughter lives there. You know, my daughter and my son-in-law live there. And 
And uh, we get talking a little bit more. And so I said, you wouldn't happen to know. And I said the, his name. And he says, you have a picture of him? I says, yeah, I got a picture of him. He says, he works for me. I'm his boss. <laughs> we had a little prayer time. And for, what are the odds of that? You know, that's in pot. I'm over here on the East Coast. He's over there on the West Coast. We go, you know, God is up to something. I'd say it's only a matter of time now. He found out about it, and he's like, wow. <laughs> he even made a post. So I want to encourage you on your prayers. Don't give up. You might not all the time see it. But God is working. God is doing something. I'm going to ask our brother Shannon to come on up here. Shannon Russ, give him a hand. I think it was just about 20 years ago I met you. About 20 years. But, you know, I, I'd, I'd been driving along, and I, every now and then I'd stop in a truck stop. And every now and then I'd see a truck. And I'd see it had a crop. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so I, I, I knew about you and I knew about your father long before I met you. I want to welcome him here to our church. You you have the you have the program here and uh, just just let us hear Hear from your heart. All right. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to be back with you. Praise the Lord. And first time I've been in your sanctuary, and this is wonderful. Praise God. And, uh, well, I'm not singing. <laughs> Wrong ministry. <laughs> We might close her down real quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, but it is great to see how the Lord is using uh, this place and uh, your congregation. And it's sure good to see you again. And uh, appreciate Brother Ron and his wife and their testimony. And we just hear great things. I use you in my sermons several times, your testimony. And how God healed your body. And uh, we just give God all the praise and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, I don't know how many years it's been since we've been with you, but it's great to be back. Good to see my friend, Brother Carlos, back there. And we appreciate him and his wife and their ministry. Amen. Praise God. And we got good friends scattered around in here, and we appreciate you. Amen. And... Um, but for those that don't know, I am a missionary to truck drivers, and we have two 18-wheelers, and in the trailer is built like a church, and we take that right into the truck stops and uh, give drivers an opportunity to have church. And, uh, you know, I don't know if we'd have room this morning for a big rig or not where you're at, but when these drivers are on the road, they're most likely not going to pull into a sanctuary, uh, one of our churches, you know, and, and uh, park to have church. So we want to take the gospel to them. Praise the Lord. And we're seeing great things happen. And we got a little video about three minutes long. Just give you an idea of what, what we do out on the highway. Praise the Lord. Hello, I'm Chaplain Shannon Rust. This is my wife, Rebecca, my son, Matthias, coming to you today from Breezewood, Pennsylvania, major crossroads in America for truck drivers. Thousands of truckers come through here every day. We are U.S. missionaries to the truck driver. 
and we're reaching these men as they come through these truck stops, giving them an opportunity to have church and seeing many come to the Lord Jesus Christ. My dad, 40 years ago, was pastor in a fine church, and the Lord spoke to him and said, Sam, will you take the gospel to the truck driver? And I didn't know how when he asked me, but I said, Lord, if you be a lamp on my feet and a light on my path, I'm your man. And that's exactly what he's been for 41 years, saving souls, keeping these old trucks rolling, and helping me as mechanic, driver, and preacher. Through your support, recently a driver was able to come to the Lord. We called a service, and you know, we only had one that day. But the Lord had given me the message how the Lord will leave the 90 and 9 and search for that one lost sheep that has gone astray. And when I came to the end of the service, I gave the invitation, and I said, the Lord is searching these Pennsylvania mountains for that one lost sheep. And you know what? That driver raised his hand. He said, well, that's me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he gave his heart to the Lord. It's people like that that we're reaching that they don't hear the gospel anywhere else. They're not going to park their rig into a church lot to have church. But they're able to come to church out here on the highway in these truck stops. Thank God for my son Shannon and Becky who are following me in this ministry and it'll be a perpetual ministry to truck drivers from now on till Jesus comes. We love you for your help in finances and prayers. We're taking these rigs into the truck stops, opening up, giving them a chance to have service and uh, giving them an invitation to find the Lord. Thanks again and God bless. Amen. Amen. It is a, a joy when we go in there and we call a service and to see these drivers prepared, putting a Bible under their arm, coming to church. And, uh, and it's a special time if those drivers make that effort, you know, to come to a service. Uh, you know God's showing up. Hallelujah. And uh We've just seen some great things happen in the Lord. My dad started this ministry. Uh, I, he said 40 years. It's probably been 44 now. and uh, But he's going to be 85 here in January, and he's still scraping gears. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, God put this in his heart. I just think one day he'll just catch an extra gear and head right on up to heaven. <laughs> take the rig with him I don't One, praise the Lord. Starting at verse 9. Acts chapter 1, starting verse 9 and 
Scripture says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we just ask this morning you take control. You see every person that has come to our church today, that God, you would move and minister in a special way in lives. If there be one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, I pray this morning they would make that decision in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This scripture, I believe, Brother Ron, what a blessing that testimony you gave uh, about your son-in-law and meeting his boss of all things. That's amazing. and uh, But all it tells me, I wonder how much time we got left. Because I believe something's happening like Pastor said. And we need to realize. I like to look at Scripture and when you see a Scripture we read like this and you think of those two angels that had a message that day and they had to get those disciples <laughs> Quit gazing up in the sky. There's work to be done. And I wonder today if those same angels could come here. If they had a message for us today, what would their message be? (laughs) I'd be saying, I think they'd be, you better hurry up. (laughs) Things are winding down. And it's testimonies like our brother just shared that shows me God is interested in reaching souls He's interested in reaching your loved ones. Hallelujah. And he's he, man may forget, but God has not forgotten. And he wants to see these saved. Hallelujah. Now there's a lot of there's a lot of gazing up into heaven. Can you imagine seeing the Lord ascend into the heavens? And uh, but those angels real quickly got had to get their mind uh, shifted somewhere else. And I, I, I talked this morning about a gaze. You know, you can be gazing at something. You can get your mind on something. There's so many things to get you sidetracked. And just as those disciples were looking as Jesus rose away into the clouds, uh, today we can be caught in all kinds of gazes, can't we? We can be sidetracked in all kinds of areas in our life that gets us off the purpose and the message that we need to be sharing this morning. And I believe, first of all, as we see this, we call it a finish line, where Jesus comes back for his children. When we see the times winding down, the time of grace will be wrapped up and our opportunity will be over to reach souls as far as in time and area of, of grace. And uh, as we see that time approaching, what are some of the things we need to do? One thing I think we need to do is examine ourselves, don't you? Hallelujah. We need to make sure we're not walking as a hypocrite or uh, that our heart is growing cold to the things of God, you can sit in a church pew and be an icicle. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? You can go through religious motions and be dead to God. Think of that. I had a driver who came up there in Breezewood and he saw my chapel and he couldn't 
couldn't resist to come on board. He, he knew it was his time. He, he just came on and he just laid it out, Brother Ron. He, just, he said, I've just got to be honest with you. He said, my pastor back home, he says, he thinks I'm a righteous man. He says, my wife back home thinks I'm a righteous man. He goes, but out here on the road, I'm living for the devil. And he was so broke at when he looked in the mirror of his life, and how he was putting on a facade back home, yet out on the highway with drivers and in the truck stops. He was finding his life far from God. Folks, that's not how you want to live today. If somehow you find yourself in that place, repent. Repent and get close to the Lord. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. Hallelujah. And come close to Him this morning. Don't let there be anything holding you back or holding you down. Hallelujah. My wife, and she traveled with me for years. I got some of her CDs back there. She's ministered in song for years and, and is now probably doing a little more preaching than she is singing. And uh, back at our church. And... Uh, but she still works two days a daycare, you know. And it was a cute thing that happened. She wonders sometimes, you know, how, how the message gets through to the children. And uh, what do they remember? Well, she was telling a lesson. I, I forget what it was totally about, but she was talking about Israel and the Philistines. She talked about those Philistines being on the devil's side. <laughs> and she said, Israel was on God's side. And so uh, he, she kept hammering that message, you know, those Philistines on the devil's side. And here the one of the little kids went home. And, you know, these are three and four years old, year old, you know, you don't know what's going on. But I'll tell you, they catch things, don't they? And uh, one of them, they uh, heard their mother getting upset, you know, and uh, I guess who knows what all happened, but he saw it a certain way. He said, he said, Mom, are you on God's side or are you on the devil's side? <laughs> I thought it was the cutest thing. And her mom kind of was surprised, and she said, well, you know I'm on God's side. He goes, sounds like you're on the devil's side. <laughs> we better make sure we're on God's side, huh? Praise the Lord. We want to make sure as Jesus is coming soon, we see the signs and the times. In America today, we're all wrapped up in our own political problems, and the whole time things are happening in Israel that are showing us Jesus is coming soon. Yes, hallelujah. And it tells us to be prepared and ready for his coming. Jesus said, be ready, be alert. We're to be prepared. He comes in an hour that we think not. He comes as a thief in the night. Think of that. And if you knew when the thief was coming, you would be ready for him. And so Jesus is giving us uh, this message, I believe, this morning to share with us that we need to get out, support your missionaries, support events in this church, get behind the church, lift up your pastor in prayer. One thing Satan will try to do in these last days is to discourage us. He'll try to get us off track, and get us gazing on other things of this world, and get our eyes off the prize and what needs to happen. Now, we're right in the smack dab in deer season. How many deer hunters we got? <laughs> We don't want we'll hear your story how it expands. <laughs> now that's fishermen. I'm sorry. They tell, 
<laughs> how big the fish that got away, right? But anyway, those hunters, now you tell me, if one of these hunters that go through all they do to get ready, if they were coming out of the woods and dropped that rifle on the rocks, that they're just going to say, oh, it'll be all right. We'll just go out tomorrow hunting again. I'll, I'm sure that sighted in right now. You're going to make sure that that sight is right. And so it is with the church. we got to make sure we stay focused on the things of God. God's Word leads us in a way to show us to be prepared, to be ready to share the gospel, to realize, hey, there's in the balance is heaven and hell. Think of that. And there's souls in the balance. And they need the Lord Jesus Christ. You can, that's what brother was saying when we talk about our prayers, you know, and wonder if they get answered or not. And, and uh, But I encourage you, don't give up. There's one thing Satan can't stand after he has nailed you with blow after blow, with discouragement after discouragement, that you're still going. <laughs> He wants you to give up, you know, give up church, just go back to the world. But I want to tell you something, there's going to be a great rejoicing when we get across that finish line one day, hallelujah, and we'll be able to give him the praise and the glory. He kept me through, hallelujah, he kept me through. What's it worth, you know, you think struggles of getting child ready for Sunday school and, and ready for church, you know, and, and uh, getting, you know, doing the works of God. Sometimes you don't see the reward right away. Reminds me of a truck driver that told his story how his grandma would take him to church, took him to church in the hills of West Virginia, and uh, 20 miles one way to get to church and brought that her little grandson to Sunday school every Sunday and he told that story his name was Virgil and, uh, and she was faithful to bring him we got must have a Virgil in here <laughs> hallelujah and uh, she bring him to church faithful but I want you to know when you stay faithful, you know, that grandma, she didn't see the fruit out of that dri that driver's life right away. But old one night on a highway, old Virgil lost control. His rig left the highway. His body flew through the windshield. And he ended up on an iceberg down on the Cheat River. And his ankle had been severed and uh, just hanging by a little bit. They were able to pull him up out of there, get him to the hospital. The doctor came to him and said, Virgil, we're going to have to take your foot off. And uh, Virgil said, please, no, doc, please don't take my foot off. He goes, and this is years ago, so, you know, there's not even the, uh, wasn't the ability that they have today to do certain things. It's miraculous, some of the things that they can do. But he said, I could sew that on. He goes, the chances of you walking with that foot is uh, going to be nearly impossible. And he said, oh, he said, please. He goes, he said, Doc, he said, you don't know my grandma's prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, you may think it's all given up, your loved one's lost, but oh, somewhere down the line, they're going to remember how they're going to remember grandma's prayers, hallelujah. They're going to remember mom's prayers, and dad's prayers, and their uncle's prayers, hallelujah. How many drivers have come on board and got saved and said, my aunt and uncle pray for me, and they got saved, and and. How many drivers, come on, I say, now there's someone praying for you. There's got to be. And they'll say, yes, sir, someone's praying for me. 
and they'll, they'll give their heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. But old Virgil, he said, please, Doc, please don't cut my foot off. He goes, you don't know my grandma's prayers. He said, well, you're going to have to sign that I'm not going to be liable for this. If you don't walk, you know, it's not going to be my fault. I told you. And so they sewed his foot back on. Old Virgil walks without a limp today. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many know there's still a God involved? Hallelujah. It's in miracle working business. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he answers our prayers. So I want you to know, don't get discouraged. Keep pressing on. Do the work that God has called you to do. Praise the Lord. The time is coming soon. He's coming back. And I want to tell you, he's going to use us in these last days to bring souls to the kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. With the time running out and all the things we can be gazing on, but we know that that time is short and Jesus is coming. It puts a pressure and a burden on me that I would be doing everything I need to do to see someone come to the Lord. And I think of these drivers out there this morning. You know, we have a service every Sunday morning up in Breezewood for the drivers inside one of the truck stops. And uh, John Glencoe fills in for me when I can't be there. I'm preaching somewhere else. And, and uh, he's been see seeing drivers come to God. It's awesome. And uh, But I think, Lord, we, we've got to give every person an opportunity. We've got to be there to let them know the gospel, hallelujah, that it can change your life. It can turn your life upside down and give you everlasting life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And I feel that this morning, and I, I hope I can convey that to you, that, you know, God's seeing all the, the missionaries you support. He sees what the work this church is doing. You're a lighthouse down here, downtown. Hallelujah. You're reaching people. You know, they're seeing this place. Amen. And, uh, and God is using you, praise the Lord, to touch people's lives. Praise God. And so that puts the urgency. It reminds me of the morning there and what we do there at the truck stop. In fact, and thank God, the big TA across the street. They, we've been there for years at the Flying J, and uh, the TA just came to me uh, this week, in fact, two days ago, and they said, we want a chapel service where we're at. Praise God. So uh, we thank God what he's doing there. Praise the Lord for these truckers. Amen. Lonely, lonely time, these truckers. It's a dangerous place. You saw Aaron in the news, 220, the cattle truck lost his life and that you just don't know and I thought dear Lord they've got to go and and you know make that announcement to a to a wife you know children and uh, there he's away from home you know and so we need you to pray for truckers but it makes me have a burden for him I think this one morning I, I know it was it God stirring me up we uh went there to have service there in the Flying J, and we'll make our announcement on the CB and, and invite the drivers in. And then inside, we get on the intercom, tell them chapel service at a certain time. And uh, so that particular morning, there wasn't anyone coming in right away. And Becky was with me that morning. She was started to sing some songs in there so we I said well I'm going to go out in the hall see if I can round up some drivers you know <laughs> so I go out in the hall and here comes this mammoth truck driver <laughs> he must have been I know he was six foot nine and that's he's just huge I mean how many remember Haystack Calhoun <laughs> a wrestler <laughs> Well, that's it. He was coming down, and he filled up the whole hallway. And so 
I uh, I come up to him. And I don't I don't usually go out there, you know, and cause a big stir. And, you know, I'll invite him in, but I don't usually go farther than that. And so I I uh, invited him to uh, church, and he just kind of grunted. <laughs> he said, "That's not for me." I said, "Oh, okay." God bless you. I go to turn around, and something just comes up to me. And, and I'm like, oh, Lord, not, not this guy. Anyone out, he could just take his thumb and push me into the pavement. And But I felt it just come up out of me. I turned around. I said, you better get in here. <laughs> and he looked at me and uh, never said a word. I said, your time's running out. And I feel that this morning. Our time is running out. And I felt that urgency. God's feeling it all the time. And I felt at that particular moment. And I said, I said, you don't want to go to hell. I said, you're running out of time. And you know what? I didn't know what was going to happen next. But he just kind of turned and walked away. And, you know, when you say something like that or you lose a witness, you wonder what kind of effect did it have, you know, and you wonder. Well, we started our service. We ended up having some others join us there, and we started. And Becky started singing. And it wasn't long till uh, that big old driver, he poked his head in the door. <laughs> and I said, come on in, join us. And he came in, sat down. That particular morning, you know, I was speaking about the backslidings of Israel, and, and uh, when I got to the end of the message, I I said, "Is there someone here, and you need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior?" And boy, without hesitation, that big old boy, he raised his hand, Hallelujah, to receive Christ. Big old tears rolling down his face, hallelujah, giving it over to God. He sat there, and there were some other drivers there. He said, Chaplain, he goes, my name's Israel. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, just thanking God, hallelujah, that uh, there was rejoicing in heaven over one. Praise God that had come into the fold. Praise the Lord. This morning, I don't know where we're at, but I challenge you. I don't know where your walk is with God. Maybe maybe you find yourself and you say, there's a little too much contradiction going on in my life. I need to get things right. Maybe you came walking in today and you don't know the Lord. You need Him. You need to receive Him as your Lord and Savior. He can do that this morning. Amen. For the church body, I believe those two angels have a message for us today. What would they say to us? They'd say, we're running out of time. Let's get busy with the work. Don't get gazing on the world or get your sight here or there. But get it on the work that God has for us to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads this morning. If you're here, you'd say I know I'm not right with God. We'll just put it like that and say, I know I'm not right with the Lord, and I want to be right. I want Him in my life. I need forgiveness of sins today. You say, I need saved. Is there someone like that? You just raise a hand. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. Just raise your hand. I want you to pray with me. Would you come? Would you come up? Praise the Lord. And we just want to say a prayer with you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you right now for the drawing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that you're moving in this place this morning. God, I just pray in these lives that have raised their hand this morning, 
that you would come down upon them and move on their lives. I pray, God, we rebuke every stronghold, every work of Satan, and we renounce the sins, hallelujah, Lord of this world, and we turn to you with all our heart. And, Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I come humbly. I need you this morning. Come into my life. Come on in, Jesus. Lord, make me whole. Forgive me my sins. Help me to walk for you. And, Lord, not look back. Lord, I thank you for saving me this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you this morning. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for coming. Praise God. Am I still on? Okay. Praise God. Praise God. God is so good. Listen. Presence of the Lord is here. That was a good message. Time is running out. We've got work to do. So, you know, as you go out this week, look for opportunities. You know, I always tell you I love a captive audience. Yeah. I was on a bus with 50 people. <laughs> yes, I shared. Well, listen. I want to open up. We have uh, several here that have asked for prayer. And uh, we're going to pray. We're going to anoint them with oil and pray. Uh, Linda, would you come forward? Jim? Uh, Ken? Now, we're going to use oil. We're going to anoint them. Because the Bible says we can... We, to do this. So we're going to do this. There's power in the name of Jesus. Whether it's for healing, whether it's for protection or covering, there is power in the name of Jesus. And we're going to believe that God is going to answer these prayers for protection, for healing. In the name of Jesus. Is there anybody else here you want prayer? Come on forward. Come on forward, dear. Anyone else? I don't want to miss anybody. Now, as we're up here and we're praying, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stretch forth your hands towards these people. And I want you to storm heaven for them. Ask Almighty God to do a wonderful work and that he will receive the glory and the honor in Jesus' name.